Okay, everybody, once again, it's Kevin Lockett. We have a very distinguished documentarian here, Mr. Laurent Buzaru. Buzaru? And you, you, your, your pronunciation is, is perfect. I've, you and my mother, perfect. <laughs> I, did, I did study French one year in middle school, so I feel like I'm fluent in the language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So the reason we're talking to Laurent is because of this amazing book, if I could get this right, Spielberg. The first ten years, it's an amazing coffee table book. Um, first actually, of all, before we it's like a coffee table because it's so big. <laughs> it's so big. I think I just got my workout in. <laughs> a coffee table. <laughs> uh, before we even start, like I want to give a shout out to the to the cover designer Richie Dave uh, Richard Davis 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 Davis. I think the the cover is amazing because I love classic movie posters and it looked like a classic movie poster. You know, it's interesting you mentioned him because we had a bit of a journey for the cover. Originally, there was a, a sense we wanted to do something very modern and 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 step away from you know what I felt was maybe a little predictable of the old movie poster from the seventies, a Drew Struzan kind of approach, you know, and, and maybe. Uh, try to do something a little more like Saul Bass, like uh, find a very modern kind of image or something. And uh, no, we came full circle to <laughs> the way it should be, which is uh, uh, sort of that retro 70s look um, with, you know, a, a very realistic kind of uh, drawing. And he did an amazing job. So I feel it very, amazing job. Yeah, I'm very happy. So how did you and Mr. Spielberg come together? Because you've worked on a number of documentaries at this point um, and still working on documentaries. How did you guys come together, especially to, to create this book? Well, you know, I've had the privilege of working with Stephen for 30 years. Um, I was originally um, approached to do a retrospective documentary on a movie he had made called 1941. Uh, interestingly enough, during that first period of that 10-year uh, uh, that I discuss in the book, that was his least successful movie, a movie that actually was uh, uh, not particularly uh, well received. Um, and 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 yet there was a cult uh, a status around it. And he always wanted to revisit the film and and um, do a new cut of the film, augment the movie. Uh, and so I, I worked on that, met uh, the head of his post-production company, um, Marty Cohen. Um, and I was like, I, I just can't believe I'm doing this. This is like dream come true. You know, I had told my parents when I left France, that, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to work with Steven Spielberg. I'm like, yeah, yeah, good luck. Well, it did take 10 years, but <laughs> eventually I got there and I've been with him ever since. And and so through the years as this, as, as the business of home entertainment, uh, um, documentaries accompanying classic films like Jaws and etc. Uh, uh, started to really emerge. I was very proud to be a pioneer in that particular field. Um, I did all those, you know, um, interviews with Stephen. And uh, um, when I was working with him on Fablemans, uh, doing the documentary on that film, I, I really got the sense there was this nostalgia factor about about him looking back at his childhood and and how he fell in love with movies. And I'm like, well, if I do a book about the first 10 years of his career, it's sort of a book sequel to Fablemans because the film ends with him starting his career and the book begins with him starting to to make films. So I, I felt there was a little bit of poetic justice there. And, and uh, I said, you know, would you be okay if I published um, the uh, the interviews that are between Duol and E.T., sort of like your first 10 years? And, and he said, sure. And uh, so as always, you know, I collaborated very closely with him. He read the manuscript. He read the layout. We selected from his archive. He was very involved with that and and shared back and forth. It was kind of a long, long process because not only is he very busy, um, <clears throat> but, you know, doing a book is, uh, is, is quite a thing. So, um, 
it it took a while, and we eventually got there, and it got into your hands. So that it is sort of um, you have it all. The one reason why I think that book is really good for film books is great, but I think it's great for young directors because I think when people think of Steven Spielberg, they think of like, oh man, he did everything perfect. He's, he has a great eye. But the first thing, the thing about the first ten years is he's still a young filmmaker trying to figure things out. Even on Jaws, he didn't think Jaws was going to be successful be just because of the problems that was on the shoot. I think I read that he thought he was going to be, become an independent director after that because he didn't think it was going to be a success. So I think it's great to show, like even for someone as great as Steven Spielberg, he was still trying to figure out his path as a director, even though he was having success. Yeah, no, I, I would say that that's, I, I totally love what you're saying because that was my intention. Um, was to really show the journey of someone who is discovering his voice, his vision, his art, and and growing within this industry. The thing that's unique about him is that everything is just equally amazing and interesting and visionary. And and even 1941 in my in my book and in this book is a great film. So so it's uh, it is for young filmmakers or young anyone actually who have ambition and a passion and make it and use it to the service of a career and um that's a little bit what i did in a, my own little very modest way obviously is that i i fell in love with movies when i was very young and uh, particularly american movies and and Steven's films and Brian De Palma, that whole era of filmmakers of the 70s really inspired me. And, and that's why I moved to America and decided to, to really put myself at the service of the filmmakers I admired. And, um, and so it's, I'm glad if the book is that little bit of inspiration for someone who is searching, who knows they love something, um, I think that's great to see, you know, the ups and downs of someone that we may take for granted because Jaws was a success. But as you said, as he's making it, he thinks he's going to get fired. So it's it's about really uh, uh, trusting your your gut, pun intended, with Jaws, I guess, uh, and and trusting your your uh, your passion, you know. Um, you mentioned 1941 a couple of times, and there's a picture of John Belushi right next to Spielberg on there. And it was interesting because it flopped here, but over in Europe, it, people seem to regard it as a pretty good movie. What did he learn from that film? Because after that, he ended up doing Raiders and E.T. But what did he learn from 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 from, the, from that experience from 1941? Because up to that point, he had Jaws, Close Encounters. He was like the wonder kid, like nothing could go wrong. And then he hit a speed bump. I think, you know, he... He realized, and it's, you know, I don't want to put words in his mouth because the book is an interview book, so you get to hear from him exactly what he thinks about the film. You, you know, but from my perspective, I would say that what I think he learned was potentially, you know, the work you need to do on 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 the script because I, I I don't think ultimately he gravitated to to that particular uh, script, and um, it's hard to tell. You know, it's hard to tell what what he learned because cinematically, I think the film is perfect, and I think that's why Europeans really like it because we recognize the cinema and the auteur and what he's trying to do as opposed to the end result. Um, it's flawed, and I like flawed films. <laughs> In fact, some of my favorite movies are very flawed uh, because I think it's showing, you, you know, that the artist is working with clay, and 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 it's never going to be perfect. There's always going to be a little bump, you know, something that's not perfect. Uh, um, so th I think you learn something from each time you do something, each time you make a film, even if it's like a masterpiece, that's why most directors I've interviewed do not look back at their films, even the very successful films they've made, because they always see what what they weren't able to do. You know, he, he talks very, very candidly about Close Encounters and how um, 
you know, he was forced to release the film faster than 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 he wanted to, and was not able to to release the first time around in 1977 the film that really represented his vision. Um, uh, he says that Raiders is really the only movie he can watch and 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 doesn't feel like he is the director. You know, he can watch it and enjoy it for what it is. So so I think that um, uh, there is a real journey for filmmakers and, and any artist with their work, you know. Uh, so I'm not really answering your question, but uh, um, I... I I think that every time you do something, you learn and you hopefully grow, and uh, um, and it's always a bit of a of there's always a little bit of a luck factor that makes the film like be a masterpiece or fail or be discovered later. You know, I I do think that today, and certainly when I met Stephen thirty years ago, there was. Even in America, this cult fascination was 1941 that was happening, whereas at the time it was made, there was no such thing. So, so you know, every art form sort of has a, a an evolution, and and sometimes you know movies that are hugely successful when they come out, ten years later they're completely unwatchable. You know, I'm sure that's happened to to you and your viewers. Uh, I've rewatched movies that I've I've loved, and I'm like, I can't believe I like that. You know, so so it's it's an interesting thing, you know, um, that happens with uh, w with art in general, not just movies. Right. You have a documentary coming up, um, you know, Mr. Spielberg with Harrison Ford, uh, yeah. Timeless Heroes, and also you. I think you're in pre production of working on another one with uh, John Williams. Yes. Um, as far as Harrison Ford goes, what have you observed uh, between the relationship between Harrison Ford and Steven Spielberg? Because it seems like it's a very special relationship between those two. And it's like they're they're really in synergy, especially and also with John Williams, because that's even a longer relationship um, um, with, with with those two or of those three, with Spielberg and Harrison and, and Williams. You know, I mean, I I think seeing Stephen and and Harrison as I witness them work on. Um, mainly Crystal Skull, uh, the fourth Indiana Jones, um, is is this uh, trust and this sort of friendship, almost like a, a family kind of spirit. There's nothing like a Steven Spielberg movie set. It, it I've been on many movie sets and there's nothing like this. It's, it's literally awe-inspiring. The energy, the... the dedication and and um Harrison is someone who is so he, he so so respect hard work he has a really strong sense of ethic actually I talk about it in my film he is his commitment and and Stephen is the same so they're very respectful in fact it's very interesting the very first time I interviewed Harrison was for a doc I did on American Graffiti. And I was in a hotel in New York waiting for him and and this, the phone rang and and I hear Harrison Ford saying, is this Mr. Boozero? And I'm like, yeah, you can call me Laurent, <laughs> you know? And he showed up and, and uh, he was just so um, respectful to the crew, to me, uh, so professional you know and and so when you watch Stephen and and Harrison together is that mutual respect but also that mutual uh um understanding that uh uh they're creating something that's that's hopefully going to be um for for the audience so there's a generosity is what i'm trying to say you know that comes through and and they're very much in tune with what that is and very much in the way that Stephen said that Harrison when he entered Raiders of the Lost Ark was sort of the rewrite artist because suddenly the film took on a complete different identity um, and and Harrison is super smart with scripts and character get characterization and all that stuff is really uh, something that he excelled at in addition to being this amazing actor. And same thing with John Williams, you know, uh, 
um, Stephen often says that John Williams he rewrites his m movies after he's shot them with his music. He he is the the final touch to the story. So you know to to be witness to um, those types of collaboration is is a. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a cliche. It's, it's inspiring, but it's also uh, uh, a great lesson in in um, the collab the collaboration that can exist between artists. You know, th that's based on trust and and mutual admiration and mutual understanding, and not based on conflict. You know, which there, there was a director named Otto Preminger who made some amazing movies who thrived on conflict on films and and uh and and felt that that was the only way to 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 get to uh um uh, good result was conflict well that's not <laughs> the case here quite the opposite all right uh, I know we're pressed for time, so you have to go pretty soon. I do have a suggestion for a documentary, and hopefully I can get a producer credit on it. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, well, we'll see. You did a great documentary called Five uh, Came Back, yeah. uh, where you featured John Ford, John Houston, uh, who was it? Uh, Frank Capper, William Wyler, and George Stevens. Yeah. I'd like to suggest an, another one, and you mentioned the name before, uh, with Brian De Palmer and George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and Martin Scorsese. It'd be wonderful to have a documentary with those guys, since, since everybody's still around and they're healthy and they're, just to talk about each other's films um, and just filmmaking. Because whenever I see Spielberg in an interview or Scorsese in an interview, they they just they're just film geeks to the tenth power. <laughs> and yeah. I would just love to see those guys just sit hear them talk about film. Yeah, no, I mean it's interesting because it's it's been offered to me and and we we've, we've talked about it through the years. You know, um you were essentially quoting the movie brats, you know, there there was a book called The Movie Brats and and it was uh, George, Stephen, Marty, Brian, John Milius, um I think. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot to learn from them and and uh, um a lot to learn from I'm, I'm writing a book on brian right now uh um that will come out next year uh and it's also about it's complete coincidence but it's from sisters to blow out and that also happens to be 10 years uh roughly so so it's it's been really interesting to jump from Stephen, the first 10 years to Brian, not really his first 10 years because he had made several films before Sisters, but like sort of like his horror and thriller films like Carrie and Dress to Kill. And, uh, um, and, and uh, he is a fascinating guy, Brian. And I, I really hope that generation, young generations who want to make movies are, you, you know, do not forget him. Um, in the way that certain filmmakers are are sometimes forgotten uh, with time, and because he is um, quite an a, an amazing artist, and there's a lot to learn from him. And I think uh, the interviews I conducted with him for the book, and and everyone who worked with him, because I've documented his films also for quite some time, and and so I've I've had the privilege of talking to you know Angie Dickinson and Nancy Allen and. You know, people who were in this film, Sissy Spacek, Jack Fisk, her husband, who was production designer, and finding out all kinds of fun stuff on on Carrie. You know, there was a, when Carrie comes home, there's outside our house, there's a sign that says Paxton Realty. So I said to Jack Fisk, who was a production designer, I'm like, what's Paxton Realty? He said, oh, that's Bill Paxton. The actor was my art director on Carrie, but he was not in the union and so I couldn't give him credit, so I put him on the on a billboard, literally. But he's the one who found the the pig farm and carries home the exterior. I, I mean, I love that stuff. You know, Bill Paxton, game over, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got a couple of minutes left because I know you got to go uh, real quick. Because you mentioned 1941, what do you think is, is Steven Spielberg's most underrated film of the of those first ten years outside of 1941? Sugarland Express, because Sugarland Express is a movie actually I, I I saw after I had seen Jaws and Close Encounters in France. It was re-released and I went to see it. And I think at the time I was either 
too young and too much into fantasy jaws and you know big sharks big you know special effects on close encounters and i was sort of you know uh um not that impressed and through the years i have rediscovered it and i've come to appreciate it as much if not in some cases more than certain other films and there's a lot in there to to learn from and i think it's uh i mean you know for a first really officially his first theatrical film because dual was tv here it was expanded for theaters in europe but as a first film it has a maturity a vision uh, uh um it, it's it's a really an incredible film. So I I hope you know with something like this book that the the readers are actually reading not only Stephen's interview and 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 be inspired by by what he's saying, but uh, make an effort to go back and watch those films with this newfound knowledge and appreciation for what went into either making them or what they're about. All righty. That's a good way to end this end this interview. Please pick up the book, Spielberg, The First Ten Years, Lowrite Boozle Roll. I'm looking on my accent. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you for the interview. And uh, safe you, travels man. and great filmmaking. <laughs> thank you so much. You're fantastic. And I really appreciate your interest. Thank you, sir. <laughs>